pine berries like tiny red raspberries they're not sold in grocery stores so you have to forage for them wild edibles expert steve brill has a warning though wine berries are very very dangerous there are reports of people who ate them who died of happiness that's how good they taste coming up wine berries on this week's last chance foods WNYC receives support from Follies, the James Goldman, Stephen Sondheim musical, starring Bernadette Peters, Jan Maxwell, Danny Burstein, and Ron Reigns. Begins on Broadway August 7th. Tickets at Ticketmaster.com. WNYC gratefully acknowledges the backing of our corporate underwriters and would like to add your business to our diverse list of supporters. To become a WNYC underwriter, contact Executive Director Vincent Gardino at 646-829-4477. Thunderstorms expected tonight. Night, heavy downpours, likely gusty winds, humid, the overnight low 73 degrees. Right now, partly sunny 83 degrees, WNYC New York, it's 530. From NPR News in Washington, I'm Barbara Klein. The House is expected to vote this evening on Speaker John Boehner's revised debt plan aimed at winning more support from conservative Republicans. President Obama says now is the time for compromise. As NPR Scott Horsley reports, Mr. Obama is counting on public pressure to help force a solution. In a televised statement from the White House, Mr. Obama said the only way to raise the debt ceiling is for congressional Republicans and Democrats to cooperate. Once again, urged Americans to flood the switchboard and inboxes of reluctant lawmakers. If you want to see a bipartisan compromise, a bill that can pass both houses of Congress and that I can sign, let your members of Congress know. Make a phone call, send an email, tweet, keep the pressure on Washington, and we can get past this. With new economic data showing even weaker growth than expected, Mr. Obama said this is no time for political gridlock. Scott Horsley, NPR News, Washington. A federal judge in Phoenix says she has no authority to order the Obama administration to increase security along the U.S.-Mexico border. NPR's Ted Robbins says the ruling is the latest in the battle over Arizona's state immigration law known as SB 1070. Arizona officials say the state is being invaded. Hey, traffic! So the state asked Judge Susan Bolton to ah. the federal government to do more to protect it. But Bolton ruled there is no legal basis for her to act on that request. She cited an identical ruling in California 14 years ago. Bolton is the judge who blocked key portions of SB 1070 from taking effect last summer. The law gives state and local police increased power to enforce immigration law. Some parts of SB 1070 are in effect. The blocked parts are on appeal. Ted Robbins, NPR News. On Wall Street today, the Dow closed down 97, the Nasdaq lost 9, the S&P fell 8. This is NPR. This is WNYC, partly sunny, 83 degrees at 5.33. Good afternoon. I'm Amy Eddings. Westchester, Rockland, and eastern Orange counties are under a tornado warning until 6 o'clock. Forecasters with the National Weather Service say Doppler radar showed a severe thunderstorm with strong rotation detected in it near Monroe, moving southeast at 30 miles per hour. Other locations in the warning include Harriman, West Point, and Peekskill. Those in the path of the strong storm are recommended to move indoors and to the lowest level of the building to stay away from windows and to get under a sturdy piece of furniture. If driving, do not seek shelter under a highway overpass. Seek shelter in a ditch or low spot. A tornado watch remains in effect until 11 for our area, northeastern New Jersey and the city. A severe thunderstorm watch is also in effect for our area until 11 o'clock. President Obama and his predecessor, George W. Bush, will participate in New York City ceremony marking the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Mayor Bloomberg made the announcement on his weekly radio show. He says that for the first time, the annual reading of the names of those who died at the World Trade Center will include those killed during the attacks in Washington, D.C. and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The mayor says the Memorial Plaza will be ready by the anniversary. The NYPD says it's testing new counter-terror technology that's expected to dramatically help authorities detect and thwart a potential radiation attack. Spokesman Paul Brown says the technology will allow a command center in Lower Manhattan to monitor 2,000 mobile radiation detectors carried by officers around the city. So if one officer's uh, device began to measure radiation and several others were in other parts of the city at the same time, for example, that would be seen 
in real time automatically in this coordination center downtown. Brown says New York is the first city in the country to have the program. The New York City Medical Examiner says last week's heat wave has now claimed a total of four lives. The latest victims were women ages 78 and 72. They both died in the Bronx last Saturday. The medical examiner said today that their deaths were caused by hyperthermia with underlying natural disease. Summer school attendance is up slightly despite last week's heat wave. Overall attendance was about 74% last week compared to 71% during the same period last year. The Yankees try to improve to 8-0 against the Orioles tonight, weather permitting. At Yankee Stadium, A.J. Burnett faces the Birds' Jeremy Guthrie. The Mets ride a four-game winning streak into D.C. for tonight's game against the Nationals. Support for NPR comes from Farmers Insurance, local agents committed to the success of small businesses at 866-200-4BIZ. Hardly sunny, 83 degrees, WNYC, New York, WNYC.org. It's 536. From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Michelle Norris. And I'm Robert Siegel. The debt ceiling negotiations deal in huge quantities of federal spending, trillions of dollars over several years. And for the most part, the actual cuts are unspecified and reserved for future debate. But ultimately, it comes down to scaling back or eliminating programs that have commanded support from majorities in Congress in the past.